This video showcases a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner teaching a child diagnosed with anxiety relaxation breathing. Okay, it's so nice that I got to see you guys again today. I remember it last week when we talked, we went over kind of that we've done all the testing and we've really come up with the idea that you're struggling with anxiety and said that the belly pain you've been having has mostly been because you've been feeling more anxious. So how has the last week been like? Not, not any different. Um, I had to miss two days of school and one day my mom got a call from the nurse, not the nurse's office saying that I was having seven pains and yeah they made me come pick him up because there's nothing that they can do for him you know sure. so he says he's not feeling well and his stomach hurts so they just send him home being cautious sure so tell me a little bit about that day the day when you had to go see the nurse can you tell me what that day was like for um, you um, we had a test in English and one in science and one in math and I, I'm really not And he good stayed at up that. really late studying for the science test, which I don't think helped at all yeah. because he got less sleep Sure. and he's been worried about, you know, how he does on the science and... Yeah, and you know, getting less sleep is really not healthy for any of us. So I'm sure that that added to the stress. And, you know, then it becomes a, a situation where it's never ending. Right, You right. know, that it just continues to go on and on and on. When was your best day this week? And how was that? Wednesday and I am the we didn't have any tests really. In science class, we had a video, and during PE, we were just playing fun with a bunch of dodgeballs and stuff, you know. So it sounds like that was a much less stressful day. And your stomach was? Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, I yeah. picked him up, and he was fine for the no problems at all. Sure. And this is typical of what we call functional abdominal pain that's associated with anxiety. Because what happens is, in the stressful situations, our brain, which normally doesn't respond to things like this with big alarms, is going off for even little things that are very normal for us, like going, getting up to bat at baseball, or having to take a test, or getting into a disagreement with a friend. We usually can tolerate those things, but when we become overly anxious, those things become threatening to us, and our brain tells our body to not feel so good, and that's what happens with your stomach. And I think it's a lot of combinations of the things, too. It'll be, you know, oh, um, he's got a big baseball game. Well, when he played baseball, he has a big baseball game in the evening and a science test in the morning. Maybe there's a squabble between a friend, and it's like it all falls on him. Sure. On and the it's same like day, and that's when I get the blast. Yeah. Which is true. We find this with a lot of problems like anxiety, that as things pile up, they get worse and worse and cause more and more distress. And then I get the phone call, and then, you know, I can't, I can't send him to baseball in the evening because... Sure. You know, he, he only went half a day at school. And then his dad gets upset because he's not in school. And that simply causes more and stress yes. and more frustration. Yes, then he he's upset family. with him and upset with me and yeah. upset in the home. And yet, avoiding things like baseball, avoiding things like school and tests, in the short term, it makes you feel better. But in the long term, 
it just makes it harder right. to do the things that you need to do. So, you know, what we're going to talk about today are the ways that we can make this better. And we can teach you some skills that will help you to unload that stress. Instead of the glass being filled up to here, by using some of these skills, we can unload some of that and help your stomach to start being better. One of the things that I like to teach kids initially is something called relaxation breathing. Why do I pick that out to be the first thing? Because if you learn the relaxation breathing, it can lead to reducing symptoms over all of this. Now, kids will tell me, this works great for me and this doesn't work so well for me because not everybody responds the same way to these techniques. And another important thing about working with things like relaxation breathing, which we call CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy, is that we have to practice. So remember when you learned how to ride a bike? Yeah. What happened the first time? I was going down the road when I swelled off and hit it into a bunch of trees. Yeah. So, not so successful that first time. Yeah. How can you ride a bike now? Pretty good. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're really good at it. You learned that skill. That's the same thing with this breathing mic. We're going to learn this skill and it will help you over time. Is this something he'll be able to do on his own or is he going to need like a teacher or me to like coach him? I think that it's okay to remind him okay. about one time. Okay. Okay. Just remind him once because what we don't want to turn this into is something that's more frustrating right. again. Okay. So just reminding him on one occasion, hey Mike, did you do your breathing today? And it's something you actually have to practice every day. So let's just go over the basics of how to breathe. I'm going to ask you to put your hands on your stomach because when we use relaxation breathing, we breathe into our belly. That helps to calm down that big nerve that runs from your brain to your bum called the vagal nerve. And that is what makes you feel better. So. We're going to breathe into our belly to the count of four, nice and slow. We're going to hold for four. Then we're going to breathe out, pushing against resistance to help push that worry out. And then we're going to hold in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. We call it square breathing because it's four of each, and it makes it easy to remember. So, let's practice. Do you feel the difference? Yes, very much. That. Yes. What I'm going to suggest, Mike, is that you practice this 10 times at night, 10 relaxation breaths when you go to bed. It'll actually help you to get ready for sleep. And 10 times in the morning, 10 relaxation breaths before you get out of bed in the morning to kind of help you center yourself and get ready for the day. Now, when you come back and see me in a week or two, I'm going to teach you other relaxation techniques. And I really think that we can help this worry to go away. So I'm looking forward to working yes, with you guys. Definitely. And Thank we'll you. see you in a couple of weeks when we'll continue these lessons. Thank Don't you so much. to practice. Okay? <laughs> Thanks.